Oh, did you find a new NSX, by the way? Of course, big video, mate. Yeah. And I found an old one, a okay. pristine 2002. 2002? Yeah. That doesn't have pop up and down headlights. Anyone that cares about that small minded. <laughs> Donut. You're watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And that is a Zanardi edition NSX. An all original, all 90s, pop up headlamp. Manual, mid-engined, rear-wheel drive, sports car. But, unlike the new one, it's not a Type S. And that's because back then, Japan got all the good stuff. We didn't. It was also badged as a Honda over there. And in 1992, they got the NSX Type R. And in 97, the Type S which, even though it wasn't as aggressive, was actually more powerful than the R because it got the new 3.2-litre engine. I mean, that engine did make it into the 2002 Type R, but that one didn't have pop-up and down headlights, which, between you and me, even though the people at the donut offices are very nice, it doesn't matter at all. In fact, to, to focus on that is so stupid. It's all right, I've heard enough. You're a terrible guest and you're not allowed back. Thanks, guys. Uh, where were we? Oh yeah, we didn't get any of the fun stuff, but legendary racing driver Alex Zanardi, a man that has cheated death twice, won back-to-back -back racing championships for Honda in the late 90s. So, in 1999, Japan saw fit to send 51 special editions to the US, and they named them Zanardi. After, after Alex, Zanardi, the, ra the, the, the racing guy. So today, let's find out if one of the 90s legends is actually a legend. And let's see if that NSX badge carries its weight across two decades. If you're new to Throttle House, no, no. we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. So subscribe and hit the bell. So, the Zanardi is our Type S, which means it's sharper than the normal NSX. But unlike the NSX Type R, it's not supposed to sacrifice daily drivability. Except in this one, the steering's not powered. Speaking of powered, that behind me is a 3.2 litre V6. And it revs to 8,000 RPM. And the VTEC, oh yeah, it kicks in at about 6,000. It sounds quite wonderful. Half throttle sounds pretty good. Give it more, it gets this deep thrum. And then you carry it all the way out. Music. Oh, I like doing that. I like doing that. And you might be thinking, James, 290 horsepower, that doesn't sound like that much. And you're right, it isn't. But they've made it lighter. It has a lighter rear spoiler. It has thinner glass so that it's lighter. A lighter battery and lighter wheels. And as a very, very smart man said recently, the true measure of a great sports car isn't how much horsepower it has, it has, it's how many pounds it doesn't weigh. You know, that's too generous. I don't, I don't feel good being that nice to him. Kamisa's big, stupid poo-poo head. Weight is everything. This weighs a thousand pounds less than a new C63S Coupe, and almost a thousand pounds less than a new Acura NSX Type S. And unlike the new one, this has a six-speed manual, which is very reminiscent of an S2000, but potentially some more heft to the shift. One of the best transmissions out there. Short shifts, purposeful, satisfying naturally aspirated engine to shift with. Downshifts are lovely. 
And then there's the steering, which as I said, is manual rack and pinion. And the feedback through this, it writes the storybook of what you're doing with the car as you drive it. I can feel everything. There's a Lotus-like connection to the just over 3,000 pound car beneath me. And speaking of beneath me, driving position, wonderful. The car feels very low to the ground. It, it, it almost feels like that front-facing camera over the hood in things like Gran Turismo. My viewpoint is the road rushing up underneath me more than anything. I've always been curious to drive this car. It's always looked so good. Growing up, there was one down the street with a license plate, my NSX. And I think it's still there because for that owner, this car is a keeper. And driving it now, I totally, totally get it. It doesn't feel new. This, this experience is not possible to replicate in a modern car. With the way the chassis is set up, and the race tune suspension for the Zanardi. I feel total control. It has poise, it has grace. And I don't think that that's unique to the NSX. I think the JDM cars of the era, especially the rear wheel drive ones, all kind of capture this magic in some way. I can't imagine what it was like to buy this new. This is making me nostalgic for a time where I was far too young to appreciate or even drive this thing. Just think, you're at the end of the 90s. You're on your way home from seeing the first Matrix in the cinema, and you're driving quite possibly the sweetest JDM car on the road. Are you? Because this is a Mines R34 GTR N1 and it is a significantly cooler JDM car than that one. Thomas. Yeah. This is an NSX video. You can't bring out an R34 every no, I time can. you talk about JDM. No, I can, I can because it is so cool. Come on, one race. One little race. A race? It, yeah, yeah. Come on. Listen, it's 1999. Yeah. In a couple of years, the Fast and the Furious is about to come out and we have to inspire them to actually make good films and not go off the rails exponentially with each release. All right, for that one race, okay. well, then you're in the new NSX. Fine. I don't even know how much horsepower he has in that thing, but it's an R34. I'm pretty sure they're more powerful than this, 290 horsepower, so this is just a bit mean. Okay, so what I didn't mention before is that this GTR has 600 wheel horsepower. Yep, a lot of boost. It's real quick. <laughs> oh, once he hits the boost, I've got no chance. How much power's in that? He brings it along, and he just just to bully me. Okay, I'll go get the new NSX now. No, I meant like get it and then do a lovely review with scenic moments and. Not... Yeah, well, no, I'll do that. But, but we, just a race. There's one race. Like, I mean, I I just beat you. And I'll probably beat you again. But I mean, I yeah, just want. Yeah, but not like this. Is that is that APOC from Matrix? It's Switch. Oh, Switch. Yeah. Sorry. It, look, the two tertiary characters. The Matrix came out when this car... Did the Matrix film come out when that car came out? We don't talk about that one. Yeah? Well, dodge this. You say dodge this? God, that's lame. Launch control. Bye-bye. If he can cheat, I can cheat. And now I'm going to absolutely win. This is a quick car. So what happened happened. Couldn't have happened any other way. This is the modern version of that Zanardi. 
If you happen to have $187,000 US, then you can get yourself a 2022 NSX Type S with the lightweight carbon fiber add-ons. Only 350 of these will be made. And while it has the same hybrid turbocharged V6 out back and two electric motors up front like last year's NSX, the Type S now has 600 horsepower and 492 pound-feet of torque. Couple that with tweaked suspension, upgraded aero and lighter parts, and you have now the quickest and most powerful road-going Acura ever. But even with those performance-focused tweaks, the NSX Type S still doesn't sit at the top of the supercar food chain. Okay, so there's definitely sportier cars out there. And there's definitely better sounding cars out there. But this car does something that none of those can do. And that is become comfortable. Really, really comfortable. Click it down into quiet mode. The engine shuts off. We're running in EV only mode now. And the car is the most civilized supercar that I've ever driven. The insulation from the road is amazing. The seats are so comfortable. The visibility is perfect. The damping, like the ride is just, it's like, it doesn't feel like a supercar right now. I wouldn't know that I'm in a big mid-engine monster if I didn't see the two yellow haunches out front. This car is an absolute breeze a breeze to drive on the highway, long distances through the city. But supercars aren't supposed to be just nice. I have to be able to click this into track mode. Shift manually. <laughs> oh, it's quick. It's really quick. Oh, that transmission, it's been retuned. It's really sharp. The paddles are very satisfying. For the Type S, the sound of the V6 has been tweaked. So it's more of a symphony. I can't tell that there's an electric motor back there assisting, filling in the gaps, and two electric motors out front doing torque vectoring, helping the front end turn in. Driving like this, as if I was on a canyon road, this is one of the most confident and easiest to drive supercars I've ever been in. And for most people, that's everything you need and more. Confident power, all wheel drive, torque vectoring that pulls the nose in around the corner, shifts that are quick. But for guys like me on a racetrack like this, I need this car to do more. When I push it, I need to know that I'm in a mid-engine supercar. And unfortunately, the Type S, even with all its new power and chassis tweaks, it still doesn't quite do it for me. All I get is understeer out of the front. In fact, it doesn't matter how I enter a corner, go in, lift off, or try and power through, I cannot unstick the rear, which means that I just get the front end just that doesn't go where I want it to go. Oh, that's scary. Even with a torque vectoring, it doesn't matter. Turn in, go. Oh. It's just too bad, you know, because it's so close to being brilliant. No, it just won't. It just won't. I don't feel like I can really have fun at the limit, and it's a shame because it could be so good. I don't feel like these electrical systems are interfering for the most part. It, it feels like it's well-tuned, it's well-calibrated. But oh, I don't know. It's like they only want you to drive it at 8 tenths. It's too bad. But I do have to keep in my head that most people that might want to drive this car are not necessarily track guys, they don't go to lapping days. So if you're not a person who feels the need to try and drift a car around, this car is brilliant at what it does. It really, really is. It's comfortable, it's fast.
It's easy to drive. It's safe. But personally, personally, just me, I wish it was just a little bit more fun. Okay. I'm still bitter. But what? You beating me in the drag race after I'd even <laughs> cheated. <laughs> that was very fun. Okay, by the way, that R34 yeah. was nuts. Yeah, I know. It was, it was nuts. Like, I was sweating and scared at the end of it. Watching you fly past every time the turbo The boost would go... Yeah, the boost. No, it was not. It was also really, really hard to drive. How much power being. was in it? Uh, so somewhere around 600 wheel. I don't know exactly. Okay. But like, right, so don't feel so bad. No, no, you shouldn't. And this, is, this has got 600 to the crank. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah. No, this is still a very, very quick car. Um, so yeah, I did have a few issues with it. I, I, I think that I they definitely want to lean on the side of saying this is a fantastic everyday road car. Just yeah, easy, comfy. Yes, but. It now looks awesome, which really kind of plays into it being a really cool everyday road. So I, I think it looks good. I always think I thought it looked good when this really? came out. Yeah, but the, the tweaks they've done for the Type S, which is the only way you can get this car now. Yes, yes. New. Yeah. In fact, they're all sold, so it's pointless. So um, now we go home then. Yeah. Okay. Um, um, but the tweaks they've done with the front fascia have made it look really aggressive, especially there's an angle here. Yes. From the side. It looks like a saber-toothed tiger. This yeah. is a big eye. It's like a fang coming down. They've yeah. done a lot of stuff for the for the Type S. Like they, to to be fair to them, they didn't just badge it. No. They did a lot of stuff. Like like these are special wheels and tires. To the Pirellis are specifically designed for the Type S. It's got a rear diffuser that's like inspired by the GT3 race car. Apparently, I mean like the front end, it, carbon fiber roof. Um, the front end, by the way, I think it took it for me from going from a car I didn't like the look of at all to a car that I love the look of. That, you know that? It, it, like that's, that was the switch. Wow. Honestly, I'd never liked the look of it when it's kind of like, like gum guard. Well, what I do know is this gets a lot of attention. We've been living with it. Yeah. Lots of attention. It's like a car. pylon. So like, it's, like, it's so bright. Oh, but you mean a cone? Like, yeah. Wait, what's a cone? That's what we call it. Cone, that's what you put ice cream in. No, that's an ice cream cone. You have weird words for everything. Pylon is the aerial, t anyway. Watch this everyone. What do you call s s the stuff you wash your hands with? Fairy liquid. Fairy liquid. Why? Um, anyway. Because if you don't pay homage to the fairies, they come and steal your children. I don't know. <laughs> right, daily livable car. Yes. You know, raw, but not punishing. No. And potentially more practical, which is a big part of daily no. supercar. No, it's can't, look how much bigger this one is. There's more space. And right, but when we did the R8 and the 911, yeah. the 911 trounced the R8. Yes. And you know, as time has gone on, you'd have thought they'd package this to make it more livable. So I've brought along. Uh oh, here we go. Oh, you have a case. Y yeah. Oh, I did this to you. I did this to you in the 911 versus R8 video. Standard car. Yeah, this is revenge. Yeah. Okay. You've been at drag race twice. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't fit. In, at all. No. Like not even close. Well, first of all, there's a big bump. Yeah. In so, the I don't know if it's like space for exhaust or drive shafts or something. Yeah. And then but... even then, I don't think it would fit. No. May I direct your attention to the really cool looking engine cover, which uh, actually kind of looks like you're meant to pour change into it and it will sort it for you. It does look like that. Yeah. It's very nice. But it's yeah. really, it's weird. I love it though. I think it looks Don't really cool. throw a coin in there. No. All right. There's the no old... way there's more storage in this, James. The yeah, old there one. is. The there's old one. so much more. This is what happens when there's no like safety standards. <laughs> you don't need crash or crumple zones. <laughs> that is massive. Massive. Carry you, on. You could fit probably two of the easily two carry-ons. Easily two. Easily two carry-ons in there. So it wins there. Yeah. And, and it has a frunk. Yeah. Kind and of. it only costs a hundred thousand dollars more. Oh yeah. But you don't need to get this one, even though it's basically museum spec. <laughs> this one is this one is in unbelievable condition. Well, this is so being this is an RD, we've got these wheels, we've yep. got the formula red paint. Okay. And then we've got all the lighter weight stuff going on. But for the most part, it does look like this gen NSX. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that was already a very, very good looking car. I think it is. I love the proportions of it. Um I I love the nose. It's it's so quintessentially from that era. Yeah. With like the, the pop up and down headlamps, which are very important as we learned. Can I just do it? Okay, here we go. I can't get fed up with it. <laughs> it's they're so cool. Oh. Ah! oh my god, it's even the noise. <laughs> it's so good. Um big other part then. Yeah. Beyond space and ride. Yeah. Is the actual interior. Yeah, well it's great because out here there's not very much storage, but thankfully inside there's tons. 
Oh yeah. No. There's not. Go in. I'll show you. Okay. We're talking about storage. There's yeah, a there, gap here. There isn't any. No. No. There's a key thing here. Yeah. You enough. got a glove compartment. I do have a glove compartment, and I have this cute little oh, box yeah. here. Yeah. Look at that. It's just not quite enough for a phone running lengthwise. Little shelf. It's a nice little shelf. This is not a problem with the Type S. This is a problem with the original new NSX. Right. Right. Like for the original new. The original new NSX, yeah. So, for example, this glove box, as you pointed out, it's great. But uh, when I open it, first of all, it hits my knees, so I can't get it open all the way. And what is this wasted space? That's Why very, is that there? Very thick. And then, oh, which cup holders? No, there aren't any. This is what you get. Yeah. This looks like something that a doctor puts in your mouth, like, ah. <laughs> that is a thing. Yeah, it goes in. So it's great. Now I can't sit comfortably anymore. Hey, the MX-5 has that. No, but the MX-5 cleverly puts it right there. Does it not click in? No, it doesn't click in. We, yeah. So it just... So it just slides out. So if you had a hefty drink in here Maybe. and you went around a pretty aggressive left-hander, it would go flying into my lap. Lots of headroom. That, that, okay, so here's the things. So I just made fun of this car and I have a few more things to, to point out that I don't like. But <laughs> most importantly, yeah. the seats are godlike. Yes. They are so soft and comfortable and there's tons of headroom. And as a passenger, I don't have very much space, but over there, it's all like comfy. Like put your hands on the steering wheel, nine and three. It's like this nice, like ergonomic feeling kind of like bit to it. It just yeah. feels nice, right? I really, really like it. It's so comfortable to cruise in this car. Um, but then you have to use the sound system and turning the volume up and down is real slick. Why, why were they Real able to slick. change that to a knob in a Civic Type R, but not in an NSX? But they just didn't bother in the NSX? Yeah, this you, is I the, mean, you still have it here. Yeah, so this is, this is a Civic uh, satellite navigation system infotainment. This is like from an Accord. I like the gear selector. I've never liked this. It's not, it doesn't quite make sense. Just like give me a little, like, little thing that I can pull and push just to put it in gear or whatever it is. Um, gauge cluster, a little bit dated looking. A little bit, very dated. Okay, fine, very dated very looking. Dated. Um, yeah, so I've never really loved the interior of this car, but the thing is, is that comfort trumps all when you're on a long trip. So you would, you would rather take comfort than like really expensive feeding metals and leather. Yeah, this, exactly. This is, it's, this fine. Is, it's fine. It's fine. It's, it's not, you know, it's more C8 Corvette level, really. It is literally C8 Corvette level. Yeah. yeah. But when you, but honestly, when you're driving long distances on like a bumpy, broken highway, these seats and like the no, they're, ride they're and wonderful. it just you just like melt into this car it's great it's everyone says the 911 turbo s is like the daily supercar this is so much more comfortable but as it is as a ratio though when you start multiplying performance by comfort then that's when the the turbo starts yes, to win yes fair enough yeah because it's just outrageous it is so fast um but no this is this is seriously a, a really comfortable car it's just deeply flawed in many ways. I don't well, want to talk about it anymore. Can we go talk about the old one? I was going to say, that's okay. Okay. If, it, if the old one was like that too. But it's not. Well, we'll see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because this is cool. It's very cool. It's, it's really not, cool. It's not like exciting. It's just well- Are there cup holders in here? How, how does one, how does one open? Nope, that's just, well, it's storage. It's pretty good storage, I'll, I'll So, you know. what you're saying is, if there aren't any cup holders... <laughs> then they haven't made any... And, fun. look at that. Thick glove compartment. Wow. I love these with, old versus new videos. this is even worse, look. That's where the airbag is. There's hardly any storage in there. Listen, true to the original, the new one is. Why did I say that like Yoda? <laughs> because <laughs> I think it's quite a prophetical thing to, <laughs> yeah. to find out. Okay, so it's an RD edition. Red stitching, red stitching, micro suede and leather seats. Yeah, and I heard there's red stitching in the steering wheel, and that's confusing because why is this not? I, so I think this is a Momo JDM tie. So this is the same hence one. The, hence the Honda badge. Which, and this is the best beat. No, that's what it says. You barely touch it. <laughs> you barely touch it. Um, yeah, okay, so this is so the uh, so someone has put on the JDM style steering wheel from the Type S, which honestly is all the better for it because that era of airbags wasn't good looking. But it saved your life. I don't care. Right. This, this, the, the, you're not going to fare well in an accident this thing anyway. Similar divots in the roof for extra yep, head space. Yep, yep. Comfy seats for the time. These are very comfy seats, actually, and they're, like, powered and quite adjustable. I'm, yeah, I'm surprised. You know, in some ways, I'm surprised how many electronic things there are in here, and I'm also not surprised because the whole point of the Type S was to not sacrifice comfort. Yep. So the fact that we have 
It's got tons of stuff. Electric seats, electric seats. auto wing windows. Yeah. There, there's cruise control, traction control, got the lights. Like, uh, ev everything is really intuitive and easy to use. Climate control, it doesn't get any simpler than that no. in the climate control world. And this one's had a radio delete. Radio delete, so it's got that panel there. Spacious. This is, this is a really cool shift knob. Very Honda S2000. Very, well, right? this has probably started it. Yep, yep. Probably at the beginning. Yeah, sorry, that's, that's very this. Um, <laughs> can I say that the gauge cluster is yeah. so awesome? I just love it. It's also big. Like, it's really big. Like, from my perspective, it's like filling my vision. Huge dials, easy to read, and we've got all the gauges that you need to actually monitor that little old V6 behind us here. Well, and we've got a plaque behind us. We do have a plaque. With Alex Zanardi's name on it. This is number three. <laughs> wow. Which means that... This is a museum piece. This well, you know, some people nuts. don't want to get the first or the second so they can iron out the issues. So this yeah. is like 20 minutes later. 20 minutes later, this one rolled off the line, they would have fixed all the problems. <laughs> um, I think, you know, when we when we do the old versus new videos, um, we hope you've enjoyed today's one. Um, it's interesting to see how much of the new car is true to this. Yeah. And I feel like they are very different cars with the all-wheel drive, the hybrid. Yes. This is a very different experience. This is this is a much more simple, pure supercar killer experience, right? That's what that's what it set out to do. Yeah. Right? It's just simple, mechanical, no power steering, manual transmission, naturally aspirated. It's got all of the basics, and I love it for that. Also, I, can I, I will say that the driving position is really really good i'm, yeah, I'm curious really good because this is such an expensive example i'm curious now to try like a mileaged up cheaper nsx i know there's still over six figures already but yeah because I, I this is probably about 400 canadian the, the last one that sold and bring so a trailer was 277 us and that was so no, who this knows is, who this knows? is a beautiful car i love this i've always loved it and do, am i going to get to drive this at any point I don't think we've got time anymore. So, the new NSX Type S is a comfortable daily driving supercar that shines at pretty much everything minus on the limit driving. It looks, sounds, and goes better than its previous version, and compared to its similarly priced competitors, it's definitely the softest. The Zanardi, on the other hand, as we said, is quite a different proposition. It's completely at home at 10 tenths, and yet denies the operator none of their daily driving comforts for the time. Minus power steering. And yeah, okay, it's a little bit slower. Okay, a lot a bit slower. But add the sensation of speed and pure JDM-infused white-knuckled driver engagement, and you have a car that our entire team couldn't get enough of, and one that is most certainly a legend. Thanks for watching. Yep, we're just packing the cars in. That was the last shot. Yep. Hey. Yeah. Are you taking it in? No, I'm taking it out. Why are you wearing loafers? <laughs> James. You weren't wearing those a second ago. Yeah, no, I know. Um, if you no longer go for a gap that exists, you're no longer a racing driver. What's I got to do with loafers?